right, uh, let's get into this last set. Let's talk about congruency. Um, so how, if you're going to talk about congruency, you have to talk about lengths because that's what congruency means, things that have the same length. Um, and there's really two ways to do it, I think. We have the Pythagorean theorem, which you know about, and the distance form, which you should too, although it might be the one that you're least familiar with. Um, so let's talk quickly about the Pythagorean theorem. Um, a couple quick notes here. Um, it really only applies to right triangles. Although you can create those triangles yourself. Um, and then the formula itself, and here's where I think you'll kind of spark some memory. Um, the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, and that, again, if you apply it to a right triangle, um, you have to acknowledge that a and b are going to be the sides, or the piece along the sides, and c is going to be the piece straight across. Um, so this was a, a, a kind of a calculation that you can perform at any time as long as you have a right triangle. And really what it does is help you find the third side of a right triangle. Now your focus here is going to be in finding C. Um, because if A and B define kind of these up and down distances, those are not the ones that are interesting. It's the ones that's diagonal that's interesting um, because that's the one that you can't just count. Okay? Um, so let's put that into action here. And so let's say you want to find the length of this line. Well, you just can't count diagonally because all those squares are different sizes. And so you can't just be like, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like, that's silly. Um, that's just underneath, that's beneath you in terms of like mathematical knowledge. What you really have to do is calculate the side length, um, which we're going to label kind of as the C value, um, by creating a right triangle around it. And so it's pretty simple how we'll do that. Um, like, we'll just drop one side down here to create this side of the right triangle. Uh, and then we'll take another side right here, connecting it. And so we've essentially made a right triangle. Now the advantage here is if we just have vertical and horizontal distances, we can just count it. And so like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, this has a length of 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this has a length of 6. Um, and so if you want to find the length of C, which is a black line that one we really want to use, we can go right into our Pythagorean theorem. So we have A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now A can just be this guy here, B can just be this guy in the bottom. It doesn't actually matter which one you pick for A and B because they'll both be added anyway, um, but typically this is a setup. And so we, we'll do some substitution. Instead of A, we can actually use a seven, and that's squared. Instead of a B, we'll use a six, and then we're trying to find C squared. Now you gotta be able to solve some algebra here, but we've been practicing that. You're good at algebra anyway, so seven squared means seven times itself, so that'll be 49. Um, 6 squared will be 6 times itself, will just be 36, and end up with C squared. Um, 49 plus 36, um, and you know, we can grab our calculator here, see if I can pull one up real quick, uh, just so you can kind of see the calculations I'm performing. Um, and so 49 plus 36 um, is going to be 85. Now, here's, here's kind of the problem with this, uh, finding links that are kind of unusual. Um, in order to, to get C by itself, we're going to have to square root. Um, but there is no number, so C is equal to square root of 85. Um, there is no number times itself that makes 85. Um, now what we can do on the calculator anyway is to go kind of see the scientific version of that. And we can use like this square root button right here. Um, whatever calculator you're using, the button's going to look very similar. Um, and that will tell us what number times itself is 85. Now prepare yourself, it's going to be a decimal defined value. Um, and so we can either leave our answer as a square root of 85, and there's lots of advantages to doing that. We can round it off uh, to 9.2, uh, let's call it 2.20 or 2.2. And usually you want to round it two or three places, but that gives us a distance. And that also highlights why you just can't count diagonally, because that's 9.22 is the actual distance uh, of this line. Okay, So this is 9.22 whatever units long. And so Pythagorean theorem is just a nice quick way you can actually find that, that value. Um, now let's go back, let's kind of go back to the top here, let's talk about distance formula. This works equally well. Um, the distance formula actually comes from the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, I'm just going to abbreviate Pythagorean Theorem here. Um, and so it's going to look very, very similar. Um, the advantage here is that it works anywhere. It's what we call a generalization. Um, and by generalization, what I mean is they took the Pythagorean theorem that only kind of works in triangles, and mathematics is like expanded, so it works all the time. Now, the downside is the formula is kind of kind of long, and so the distance defined by d um, is equal to the square root of 
uh, the change in x, the change in x's squared, plus the change in y squared. Um, which just like slope, we can probably calculate that pretty straightforwardly. Um, but if you want to break it down, there's another way to, to look at it. Um, we're actually looking at the x and y's as a, a substitution. Um, so we take the second x value, subtract it from the first, square it. Um, then we can take the, the second y value and subtract it from the first and then square it. Personally, like I like this version much better because it, although it does count on us kind of doing some work in our head um, or looking at the values, it seems to tend to be a lot simpler. Let's talk about how now to apply this. And so what I've done is go ahead and label the two endpoints here. Uh, but we're not going to use um, the Pythagorean theorem to do this. We're going to use a distance formula. Um, because uh, I prefer it, I, I'm going to look at it in this way. So the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. OK, so the change in x squared, well, let's look at this. Um, this goes from negative 5 to 1. Well, that's a change in plus 6. So I'm going to go 6 in parentheses because that's my change in x. And I'm going to square it. And I'm going to change, add, now add that, excuse me, to my change in y squared. Well, again, we're going from 5 to negative 2. That's an overall drop of 7, and it's actually going to be down 7. So I'll go negative 7 and then squared. Okay? Um, so just like the Pythagorean theorem, we have to do some algebra here. But we know 6 times itself is 36. Um, and add that to 7, negative, excuse me, negative 7 times itself um, to be uh, 49. Now, um, let me bring the calculator back up here just really quick uh, because there's a common mistake that's kind of made here, and I want to kind of show you how to avoid it. And so, again, it kind of depends on what calculator you're using. Okay, bring the calculator back up. Maybe. All right, there it goes. Okay, so here's how some people enter this into their calculators and get it wrong. Um, so we'll take negative 7, and then they'll hit the square button right here. Um, and so this calculator kind of intuitively knows not to make that mistake um, because they hit negative 7 and square it. Um, if you want to avoid that mistake in the future, you're going to have to use parentheses. Um, let's see, I don't know if this is really going to show that. Yeah, it's not going to show the parentheses on there. Um, but using parentheses when you square it will all, usually always yield the right answer. Um, if you don't use parentheses on most calculators, they'll mess it up. It'll actually give you negative 49. You know that's not true because if you take a negative times a negative, you get a positive. And so this will end up being just 49. Um, now carrying our calculation forward, um, 36 and 49 is going to be 85. And so we end up with a square root of 85. Now if you look, this confirms that either method is actually going to be OK. We're getting exactly what we got on the previous problem using the Pythagorean theorem. And so um, how you work these problems is up to you. And so you now see an example of both Pythagorean theorem. You see one for distance formula. If they're both going to get you the same answer, um, it's up to you which one you want to use. And so uh, getting into just a couple, just one really quick example. Um, determine whether or not AB is congruent to CD if AB is defined this way and CD is that way. Um, so we can do a couple different things here. Like first of all, I'm just going to find the distance of this AB using the distance formula. And so the square root of change in x squared plus change in y squared. Um, and so we can, I'm just going to calculate that by just looking at my points, just like we've been doing. And so the change in x goes from negative 4 to negative 7. Um, that's going to be a negative 3 uh, change. It's going to go down 3. Um, and then if we're going to need a change in y, well, we're going from 1 to 5. That's going to be plus 4. And so we're going to have 4 squared. Okay. Um, so finishing this calculation out, negative 3 times itself is going to be 9. 4 times itself is going to be 16. Uh, 9 plus 16 is going to be 25. And so the square root of 25 is precisely equal to 5. And so AB as a distance is precisely equal to 5. Now to tell this congruent to CD, we're going to have to uh, find a distance CD. Um, I'm going to use a distance formula again that worked the first time. Um, I like it. So let's do it again. So change in, y, or change in x, excuse me squared plus the change in y squared. Um, so the change in x goes from 10 to 5. That's going to be down 5. So let's go 5 squared. Uh, and then we have cd. Let's see, we have uh, 1 going up to 5. Um, that's a change of 4. So that's going to be 4 squared. Okay. And so if we look at uh, negative 5 squared, that's going to be 25. 4 squared is going to be 16. Uh, 25 and 16 make 30, uh, what, 41. 
and uh, grab my calculator here. Uh, if we take 41 and square root it, we're going to get about 6.4. Let's go 4, 0. Let's go to two decimal places. And so if we look at these two distances uh, that we calculated, um, we can definitely tell that they're not congruent. Uh, simply because their distances are not the same. And so without the use of a compass, we need a replacement activity. That activity is going to be um, doing actual calculations. Now, um, one last quick note here is that you could have used Pythagorean theorem. You just would have to be able to maybe graph it um, if you had access to graph paper. A is negative 4, 1, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So there's the, there's the A. Sorry, it's not zooming in very well. Okay, um, b is negative 7, comma 5, so b is negative 7, 4, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so there's a b, and so there's the distance of the first one. Um, c, d, 10, comma 1, so there's c, and then 5, comma 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, and so there's a D, and then there's the distance we're looking for there. And so if you wanted to like use slope triangles, we told, or I'm um, sorry, Pythagorean theorem, we you totally could have um, to create a couple triangles here and then determine their length. But it works just the same as with the distance formula. And so again, that's totally your choice. Um, so last stop, let's get some uh, last minute practice in here before we proceed forward. Um, so grab the sheets for me, get some practice in. Thank you very much.